Hi, everybody. Welcome to the QB School. I am JT O'Sullivan. Today, Spencer Rattler. Rattler Mania. Preseason week three locked in. Let's get it going. Welcome to the QB School. Before we dive into the video, a quick reminder about the Quarterback School Patreon community. This group is the foundation, the bedrock of the channel. Not only is it a great, cheap way to support the channel, but you get even more Quarterback School content. Hop over there, join, become a member. I appreciate your support. As for this video, let's get into it. Spencer Rattler, preseason, week three, 2024. A little drift post. Get drifty. Whoop, up top. It's a nice catch. I feel like there are a few times in this game he certainly has arm talent. Yeah, I don't think you can argue that. We've seen it multiple places in college, seen it in the preseason. I will say the precision, and again, rookie, new team, I get it. Not going to be great all the time. But some of these throws, better ball, it's a much bigger play. So to me here, this little drift post, love this. Split, tight split. So we're come, running at a spray angle. Come in here, it's there. A good ball. And this is all sorts of yak. So it's a good read. It's a nice decision. Everything is, is there except that like premium accuracy. I love the footwork. I love the rhythm of it, the base. This time we catch it. There are a couple other ones that he certainly could have gotten help with. But I mean, overall, a lot of positive. This is executing the offense. It's just, you know, it's it's like on his back hip. He's got to slow down, stop him, a little awkward. Still a nice chunk next one here second and 10 this is a bit of an ambulance shot for me so we're going to start three by one get to two by two we're going to run a greg roman special down here to the bottom with a y cross with the inline tight end he just never sees that weak safety and again the arm talent it's an impressive throw ripping it down the middle but the decision is bad and this is how people get hurt and i don't love to see this on film ever I mean, that, that could be an absolute death shot. Whew. Now, we don't get a completion. It gets knocked out. I just think more than anything else on film, you know, it's one of those things where you're never going to see everything. Okay? I don't, I don't want to pretend like you ever are. But this safety right here, so if we're going to go must outside release, me being a smart ass saying this is Greg Rowan special, great. Here's that Y cross. So under, over, get across, feel this area. You've got to be able to see this guy, especially versus this combination. There's no guarantee that he's going to you know, feel threatened by the vertical of number two here. So he, there's a good chance he's sitting right here. So if you, if you don't like this, you have to come off to whatever is on the backside. Now, I think they run like a short in. Not my favorite answer. I'm, I much more prefer a post or a post curl, but something else here. Th this is too easy. This is, that guy's never threatened. You run right into him, and it's a damn near death shot to your tight end. Right? I mean, I, he's not pumping. He's turning that down. And I, I think it's a good decision to turn it down because that backer's going to undercut that little slot out. No. Oh, Jesus. And again, it's such a collision that the ball comes out, but it, it could have been worse. Like you could, this is how people get hurt. This is just one of those things I'm telling you in a locker room with perimeter players, wide receivers, tight end backs. They do not want to see this stuff. Dangerous. Next one here, third and 10. Now this is, I'm going to classify this as a little lucky. Uh, we end up getting the flag thrown here for either holding or PI doesn't matter. Uh, he's hot to the left. This is man free green dog in the back. It looks a little not a little. It looks panicky, like he's trying to exit out the back door here. Uh, there's no good hot answer, though. I mean, that, that's the other thing. So what I'm saying here is coverage-wise, we're going to go middle field closed. We're going to go man-to-man. -man. Okay. He is on the number three. Man-to-man you know, -man down here. This guy right here has the back. This linebacker type is blitzing. So they're rushing five. And universally, most people call that man-free. There's no hole player here for the defense. When the back blocks the guy who's rushing, then we get that green dog. So this is the guy we're hot off of, the green dog. 
the route distribution here, this looks like a basic or an in, and then there's like a shallow, and there looks like there's trying to get to a corner, and then this is like a, you know, almost like a loop or return, like you go out and come back in. This takes forever. This is not a hot throw. There really is no hot throw here. I think maybe you could make the argument, you could throw this as the hot, you know, potentially, but I don't love throwing, I don't love being in the habit of being hot over here and having the route for the hot come from this side. Doesn't mean you never do it, okay? So Anthony Richardson do it last week, but he took a big shot and had to make a jump throw. So scheme-wise here, not my favorite thing. But then for Rattler here, it looks like he's trying to just bail. Like, you, you got to... If we do, we have a hot throw. I mean, no one's looking hot, so I would say the construction of the play scares me. I'm not familiar with a play that doesn't have a hot answer in the NFL. Now, maybe the hot answer is this throw. The arm talent to make this throw is special. <laughs> you know, the decision how to get there, you know, has holes in the logic for me. But the arm talent here, again, where do you want him to go with the ball? 86 on the hot. Again, it looks like he's just hitting his back foot and bailing. Now he goes and makes a ridiculous throw to this loop, but I can't imagine that's the hot. Okay, I want to reiterate, the throw is outstanding. Going backwards, arm talent, wide side of the field, ripping it, and you get a penalty. So that part, outstanding. The offensive construction, the ability to like go backwards here to be hot, I, I don't know if you want to live in that world, but the arm talent, wow. Next one here, nice little scramble off an iteration of power pass. So we're trying to get the fullback in the flat up top on a little bluff and flat. Now there's some spacing issues here for me, but the decision from Rattler I think is outstanding. The ability to use his legs, you know, I would say protecting yourself on the boundary would be a significant upgrade decision making wise here. But we're trying to get the ball to the flat to the fullback. The fullback's going to bluff and go. That's a pretty poor attempt at a cut from the tailback. <laughs> wow. You only really want to cut the guy if he's rushing. <laughs> if he's not rushing, you probably don't want to cut him. In fact, I've never seen someone try to get cut as they're dropping. <laughs> no, no, not there. Got to go. And again, just protect yourself on the boundary, bro. This is looks like you, you cannot let up. Anybody who's listening to this that plays football, do not let up on the boundary. Run through the white full speed. So play-wise here, a few things design-wise, execution-wise for me. Fullbacks on this, what I'm calling power pass. You come out here, you bluff the edge defender, and then you're into the flat. If you want the ball, you have to bluff the outside of the edge defender. Okay, so you don't want to come up here, bluff the inside, and then go from here because now you're giving up leverage and yardage and space to whoever's going to guard you from the inside out and okay, that's that's the first part the second part here is this type of play this power pass where you bluff and get in here there's almost always someone right here now there's really two schools of thought here how this is normally done normally it's done with a snag or spot like this or it's done like with that corner clear crosser come across and now the backside guy shows up over here Okay, so the, what they do here is they go bluff. He goes inside of him, bad. Now this guy takes forever. So he's got press here. So he kind of goes up and then up and then across. That is not how I would want to do it. I would want to show up here as fast as I could. So I would want to be probably violent at the start, then stair step, then come across, and I would want to show up fast if you want the ball. So it's it's got to be one to two. And he goes one to two, and this dude is just too slow coming across, probably because he goes up the field too much. So first, let's watch the fullback go inside the edge defender. Bluff, inside. You're, you're covered. It's over. It's a wrap, dog. Whoop, covered off of it. Now watch the wide receiver at the bottom. See him go up, up, and like banana over there. He's fucking jogging. You got to run, dog. Ear must be there, but damn. You got to run, run. Not there, not there. Now, Rattler, go. Go create, go get some positive yards. Just run full speed out of bounds, man. It just looks like that's a, that's a low football IQ. It's an unsafe play. Protect yourself. Get out of bounds. Preseason, you take an unnecessary shot. You got a definite holding there on the right guard as well. 
protect the ball, get up, go. Now just go full speed out of bounds or slide and protect yourself. Full speed. Boom. Bench press in the back. He hits him. It's in bounds. He's in bounds and he hits him. It's a dumbass play by the quarterback. Next one here. Second and long. We're going to work a slant up top to the number one. Beautiful release. Whoop. Misses the jab. Puts it right on him. Okay, this is this is a precise throw. You got you can't catch your form. This is a handoff of a throw. Outstanding job. Again, we talk about the arm talent. Catch one little quick shuffle, one and hop. The ball is right on him. Again, it's a beautiful, it's a kind of a bummer because it is a beautiful release. So he kind of takes this like a uh, quick slip. He goes right hand and we miss. So you come up, you almost reset it and then come into the window. And it's, it is everything except the final execution of the catch. Now maybe catch it with your hands would make it a little bit easier. Slip, boom, on the body, on the break, beautiful. Everything except the final catch. But from a quarterback perspective, it's decisive. It's the correct spot. You know, it's be easy to sit here and say, hey, throw it to the tight end right up the middle. I don't know what the read is. We don't know what the read is. We can say he's decisive. He puts it on him. It's got to be caught. Next one here, third and 12. This is a beautiful touchdown pass inside fade to the number two up top. This goes from three by two to three by two. You know, it looks like they're trying to play stubby up top, almost like an iteration of brackets, and the guy just runs right by the star or the nickel. Again, it's a beautiful throw. Watch out, security guard. I was almost, whoa, <laughs> startled. A great throw, no doubt. Beautiful timing, nice read. You know, probably not the best defense in the world, but still beautiful touch. Again, the arm talent, hard to argue against it. Watch out, watch out, watch out. Ah! So coverage-wise here, watch the, the guy defending the slot up top. So post shift here, right? Three by two to three by two. It looks like they're trying to play like a bracket. These three or these two. And then it looks like we're manned up outside. You know, it might be some version of this, but you to be able to think you're going to come out here and just hit this inside fade with outside leverage, I don't know. I mean, look at the leverage. Theoretically, this guy should keep his space and you should be running and getting pushed all the way to the sideline here. Now again, split field coverage with whatever this is. And then what I'm used to calling like jerk routes on the outside. This one's a little rushed, but up almost looks like Haas wide juke, but they kind of take it to the inside fade and hit the middle. It's a beautiful job. It's a really cool concept. I love the throw from Spencer Rattler. Again, it's the preseason, preseason defense as well. But I mean, what that nickel or star is doing up top, I have no idea. Great base, great rhythm, beautiful touch, outstanding throw, like a dot of a throw, especially on third and long. Watch out. To be able to go out there and drop it in the bucket, just a really nice job. But you can see there's options all over the place. You know, you potentially have the tight end up the middle. Inside fade, dot, beautiful. Next one here. This is a little bit of a funky one as we get into a two-minute opportunity before half. We're going to work a version of smash down here to the bottom with drive up top. You know, he eventually gets it to where I think it should probably go on time. I Probably, if I had to guess, he doesn't take the correct drop here. You know, you don't play smash very often at a one step or a quick shuffle like this because when he goes so quickly to the smash, he's kind of early to the drive. So in all these precision passing games, if we're going to say corner and we're going to say widen smash. So this is smash to me. Up top, we're going to run drive. There's the drive shallow. Here's the basic. Okay, so this type of thing almost universally is read left to right. You, you wouldn't go catch one step here because you're going to be early for all this. So that's the timing of the drop tethered to the concept. So if you go three and a hitch, now these things have developed. You might go one, two, or vice versa, high, low this thing. Three here, four back across, right across the field. But if you go shuffle, so if you go catch one step, now you don't like this. This hasn't developed yet. This guy's not ready. This isn't here. He almost goes all the way back. He doesn't almost. He probably does go all the way back to this. That's not ready either. Then he's like, damn, now I got to take off. And now this flash is on time. So I think if we just would have played it out on time, you know, this play is an easy completion to the drive. So we're quick down here to the smash, right? One step, he's already off of it. The drive's not ready. Now he's to the basic, not ready. Now he's to the back, not ready. Everybody's, he's early. So the timing of the drop is not correct. 
but he eventually gets back to the drive as it should be. Now, if he would have stayed on the smash down here, he probably throws the hitch. Regardless, he eventually gets it right. It's just not what I would consider clean or in sync. Like this is, this looks like the quarterback is going recessy footwork. Now he's got to make a play. He does make a play here, but it'd be better if it's just on time. Next one here, same two minute drive. This time we're going to hit the back in the flat to the bottom. We'll spot or snag. Nice, easy completion, super catchable, get a first down, get out of bounds, well done. They're going to give you this, you take it, two minute, need a new series, new set of downs, put it right on him, super catchable, handoff of a throw, outstanding. Next one, <laughs> this is a tough one because he's trying to throw the glance down here. You know, I love the anticipation part of it. I probably dislike the decision part of this. Now, if you hit it, this thing is a, a work of art. It's beautiful. It's a very, very difficult throw because we are hot right in our lap. So to me here, I'm going to call this glancy. It's a little deeper than a slant. We're with a flat right here. So if you were to look at this at an install, I would probably bet that most times this would be the hot. So we are playing this play with this guy right in our face, unblocked. So could he come out, make a good decision and throw it to the flat? I think he probably could and should. Could he hang on this glance and throw a dot and potentially get a massive big play? Yeah, he could. And he that's what he tries. Unfortunately, the ball is just a little bit behind. Right? We've already seen this on the kind of the drift. Now he plays this with great anticipation, but it's not that great because we don't hook it up and we take a big shot. It just doesn't look like you couldn't sustain this type of play. This is a play you get away with, but you don't want to take shots like this. I mean, that is a helmet to the chin. Just raise up, throw the hot flat. Again, he's playing with great anticipation, right? He throws it. I mean, look at the receiver down here to the bottom on the 30. He's not out of that thing yet. You know, it's hard to be accurate all the time when you play with that kind of anticipation. But you don't want to be taking hits like this, y'all. Just get the ball out of your hand. Throw the flat. Get back in the huddle. Be available. It's just, a, it looks like someone who doesn't know he's hot. Like there's almost no, the, the urgency in his drop doesn't look like he's hot. Jesus, that's a big shot. <laughs> and I mean, it's almost a beautiful throw. It really is. Could he catch it? Sure. But even if he catches it, he's going down, right? Kind of like the drift we started this thing off with. So I just, I, I don't like seeing any quarterback take a shot like that. When I see a quarterback take a shot like that, I think they don't know they're hot. I'll be honest, which makes me real nervous. Next one here, third and six. We're going to throw a fade down here to the bottom one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, I don't think it's a terrible throw. You know, I would probably, you know, if we were talking to him or in the quarterback room, I'd say like, hey, why didn't we go back shoulder here? You know, maybe he likes the matchup. Maybe that's their burner. Maybe that's they got a hookup. I think the throw is decent. Is his right arm getting grabbed? Why? Well, I'm not sure why we're not reaching with both arms. I mean, that's that's inside his left hand, right? The throw is not terrible. Again, the arm talent jumps off the film. It's just the decision sometimes makes me a little nervous. Again, if they're stacked like this, like to me here, they're running even. You know, he's almost a little bit on top of him. I think this is a pretty easy back shoulder look. One-on-one, -on -one, third and six, as opposed to hooking up a fade. I just think the percentages, the type of throw, it's just easier to hit them with the back shoulder. So again, the decision making on what type of ball, how we're throwing it, where we're throwing it, who we're seeing, you know, it just looks a little, you know, I don't know if guessy is the right word. It just looks like we're predetermining. Hey, one on one, we're throwing it out here a fade. Just don't hook it up. Halftime, you dig the channel and you haven't already, please like, subscribe. Hit the bell, get the notifications. I sincerely appreciate you subscribing to the channel. It means a lot to me. I really do appreciate you taking the time and subscribing. So thank you. Again, the Quarterback School Patreon community, you know about it. Join, become a member, get even more Quarterback School content. We also have Quarterback School courses. Now, these courses are the premium content available through the channel. These are deep, deep dives on my favorite football topics. We have courses on RPOs, tempos, pass protection. The best selling course is how to beat every coverage. We even have an entire Offense available for you, so hop over there and enroll. You can check out all the courses at the new Quarterback School website, thequbschool.com. 
hop over there. There's a really fun interactive feature. Ask me anything, a fun way to dive into the library of content available through the channel. And then finally, make sure to follow me across social media platforms. I appreciate your support. Let's get back to the video. All right, now we're in the fourth quarter. First and 15, we're gonna work under center, seven step drop. Hey oh, we'll call this double circus, both circus. Uh, we end up getting a penalty, I think bailed out. You know, I, I would probably say he leaves this throw a little short. I think he'd probably help himself. Well, I've been places where this is five step. I've been places this is seven step. I would probably prefer to play this five step just timing wise to be able to get this out a little earlier, but he's really, he's kind of waiting to see where this guy comes out. And I think it's better played with anticipation where you throw like a, a seven iron out there and let him kind of like adjust back to it as opposed to it being a perfect throw. Cause if you wait, like the thing about it is if you wait as he comes out of this thing, you just don't have a lot of real estate to play with. Like as opposed to if you play it early, you can kind of lead him where you want. So again, seven step drop under center. It's never going to be for me. It's just not. Doesn't mean it's illegal. Doesn't mean it's wrong. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Tight hitch. You know, could he hitch it? Could he hitch throw right there? I think yes. You know, he's just waiting for that guy to come out of it a little. And now we're run out of real estate. And what might be a good throw if he throws it early is now laid in behind us. But love the aggressiveness. We still get an opportunity for a flag. We've gotten a couple flags that have bailed us out of kind of, you know, whether it's third and long or long yardage situation after a penalty right here. Just is a little, a little like a tick slow and a tick behind us. All right, next one here. A little naked keeper to the right. So worst case scenario, there it is. You know, it's not the end of the world where we're taking a sack. I do think it's an unnecessary hit. I think he comes out of this and looks surprised. You know, it's a pretty impressive athleticism thing here to be able to throw it and get it off. But condensed formation, so that's the first part as a quarterback. Like, hey, what's going on on these edges? I can't tell what the hell's going on. Uh, worst case scenario, this dude's hard charging me. So as I make this fake, and I mean, seriously, y'all, how often do I talk about this? Make this fake, come out of this thing with depth first. If there's no one there, then you can carve it down. But come out of this thing thinking, I've got to retreat and make a bail throw. And so they do like this double flat play you see a lot in the red zone here where it's immediately to the flat and here's that slide sneak flat behind it. Almost guaranteed to be paired with a corner and an over. Okay, so for me here, I would want to get more depth. And then if you get more depth, then you can, you've got some creativity. You can pump fake, slip underneath, make a throw. You can make a move. Whatever you're going to do, you're not going to get hit in the face like this as you're jumping. So I just feel like the, the technique of coming out of this fake looks like he's surprised. You know, you're not surprised if you subscribe to the channel because I talk about this on every other video. But these guys look like they're surprised. And again, it's not the end of the world. It's not a strip sack. But it's an incompletion and a hit to the face that you don't need to be taking. So again, it's just, it's about knowing where the bones are buried on these things. Come out of that thing. See how he makes the fake? and then angles out, come out of that thing with depth. Now you've got more room to put a move on and get the throw off without getting hit in the face, getting dumped. Damn. Next one here, another little drift post up top to the flanker, the number one wide receiver up top. Again, the ball to me is just a little behind us. You know, I would say normally this play is played without a hitch. So again, it feels just a little late. I'm not going to pretend to tell you exactly what it's supposed to be because we're not. I'm not in their quarterback room with the install. I can just tell you that normally how this play is played is you want to throw this thing with five and a plant. So up, here's that little drift. We've seen him hit it already. You know, we've seen the throw is a little bit behind us. Again, it's a little bit behind us. Again, I'm saying if the footwork is this and he essentially abandons this and goes to block the four a week here. But you, if you're faking this way, just take five, put your foot in the ground, and expect that thing to be right on the stride. Again, the little like coaching cue that I use on slants or drifts like this is you really can't stare at the receiver. If you stare at the receiver, you're almost always throwing behind him. You have to play the space where he's going to be. And again, that might sound a little abstract, but if you go out there and throw it, if you, if you try to look at the receiver and throw slants or drifts like this, you're almost always behind him. You got to know the landmark, trust it, see the soft spot in the zone and let it rip. 
So again, from behind, just watch the little hitch at the back. So one, two, three, hitch, and now it's a little late. And again, it's it's magnified because the ball's behind him. So again, a guy with that much arm talent to be missing, you know, to be missing consistently. That's it's one thing. No one's going to make every throw. Okay, I'm done. no one thinks that. But I do when when patterns emerge, and you only get thirteen attempts in a game, you, know, you got to look into the patterns, and we got to try to fix it. Next one here, third and two. So this looks like inside fade up top. We end up getting the three by two bunch inside fade up top and like a crosser down here by the number two, the point on the bunch. Now the crosser is going to come open, but it's third and two. So I love, it looks like Rattler is super decisive and probably leaves early here. In my mind, this is knowing situational football. You don't like one, one and run. No, take it. You see the hole, take it. It's third and two. You can fall forward for a first down. No, he never gets to the backside. It's not, it's zero problem for me right here because of that. Now, if he did play it out, you know, I think he ends up hitting the crosser probably for a pretty nice game. But still, there's no no issue with me at all thinking, okay, here's the inside fade. We could take a shot if we like it. There's a locked hitch. And then on the backside where I'm saying probably does come open here is right here. But again, it's third and two. Right? We can we can see the first down. The, and the, the beautiful thing is the first down marker is on the line. So as soon as you see this thing open up and create any sort of lane, just go get it, fall past the line, you're good to go. So this to me is a high football IQ play. Understand the timing, not there, go. There it is. Go forward, do not slide at the first down sticks. Get past it, love it. So again, could he have stayed with the crosser? Sure. But I like this as a clean, decisive, let's get a first down, go get it yourself. Next one here, this is stick up top and triple slant down here to the bottom. So this is a pretty nice job if you're going to play this kind of stick to a cloud corner to be able to stop him right in that hole. It's well done. I think you could also make the argument we probably want to work the other side as well if you know it's brackets. So again, who knows you know what their coverage cues are for this. I'm not going to pretend to tell you I do. There's a must outside release. Here's that stick where he doesn't run out of it into the cloud corner. He's got that cloud corner right here rolled up flat defender. You kind of settle right here. Now, what I'm saying on the other side is if this is stubby and this is man to man out here and we're running triple slant, so we've got these three for these two in a bracket, he's going to come up and take the inside one. Now we've got slant versus outside leverage, middle field open. Like I love, I love triple slant versus stubby. So again, anytime brackets, you want guys going in the same direction who's tr who are trying to get bracketed. So first, let's watch that corner up top and see how you don't throw that kind of Greg Roman stick right into him. He turns down. See him kind of throttle? Excellent. Now look down here to the bottom to the triple slant, the number two. Uh, got him. Got all that space in there as well. So just like little things, pitchers to learn from. Again, it's a hell of a lot easier for the old guy with the clicker to be able to tell you where things are going to be open after I've watched the film and know the coverage. But it's a nice job right here getting a completion. Last one here, beautiful big-time play. So we're going to run like a double move down here to the bottom. It's not a great release, but it's a beautiful route at the top. He doesn't give up on it. He knows he's got time, a little lean. And then again, wide open. Make sure we give our guy a chance. Obviously, you'd love to throw a perfect ball and get a touchdown here. But splitting hairs, it's a big, massive chunk play to kind of get an opportunity to drive down there and take the lead. So 50-yard, easy flick. Again, underthrown captain. But it's a really nice job. First of all, I love the aggressiveness. Block him up. So route-wise, the thing to work here is he gets jacked at the line of scrimmage. He doesn't panic. He gets up. He's got a double move, probably this. So the secret thing here is as he comes out of this thing, he gets his eyes back. And when he gets his eyes back, that makes the corner look. And when the corner looks, now we're out. And that creates the separation. So it's all about not this initial getting the, the initial like half L, it's up, eyes, and now go. So it's just that little eyes and lean. Let's really watch that route to the bottom and see the nuance here of that route running. So Jack, don't panic. Eyes. And he doesn't even look all the way back. He just like tilts his shoulder. Eyes right there. Now watch the corner put his eyes back. Right there. Now it's over. <laughs> see ya. Really nice job. Beautiful route. Good enough throw for a big chunk. Again, a perfect throw is a touchdown. Be great. But again, 
pushing the ball 50 yards down the field, big play action shot. If it's not there, the in over the ball, wide open, don't miss a layup, big, big chunk. So that is a wrap. Spencer Rattler, preseason, week three, really impressive preseason in general. I think the arm talent jumps off the film. I think his ability to create, use his legs when he needs to, also a nice addition. You know, I thought some of the precision things that I think you can make excuses about, new team, new system, new league, all those types of things, you would hope that the accuracy gets a little bit more fine-tuned because there were some opportunities there for even bigger plays. But, man, it's pretty fun to watch. Throw the ball down the field. Great touch, beautiful touchdown pass, big play at the end. Lots of stuff to be excited about. Thank you so much for hanging to the end. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.